Hey, what's up guys? It's Zygnus here, and I'm here to show you my awakenings for Zentaro. In this guide, I'll be showing you what awakenings are good on Zentaro, why you should take them, when you should take them, basically all the good stuff. So for our first awakening, we have the Adrenaline Rush. Now, this is a pretty strong awakening when you have other awakenings because it becomes easier to proc it and just get KOs and get the resets. And once you get a reset, you got a lot of movement speed to work with. Basically, it gives you like pretty much double your movement speed and you just get your cooldowns a decent amount of cooldowns back and on Zentaro that's pretty good because your cooldowns are fairly long so it'll definitely help you score you'll probably get your cooldowns back up after like five seconds after a KO except for your R so it's really good to have it on Zentaro once you have other trainings but it's very situational depends on if you have a team that can KO very well or if you're destroying them by yourself it's a take it depending on the game situation where if you think you can KO more players you should you can pick this one up and do pretty well with it so it'll be put in the A tier for our next awakening we have super surge I'm just gonna get this out of the way we need to make another tier for this so it's Zentar's best training by far and there's a few reasons for that basically what super surge does it increases your range on your dash by 75% and damage on dash abilities by 20%. And that's very huge because not only is Zentaro's secondary a dash, his ultimate also counts as a dash and even his passive counts as a dash. And so that also the 20% increase of damage also counts for all three of those abilities too. So you're, you're basically getting your dash increase on all of pretty much three fourths of your abilities and their damage is getting increased with three fourths of their abilities by 20% as well. So it's just a huge increase in damage, it's a huge increase in mobility. The only problem is you really don't want to be taking two uh, dash increase trainings because then it can get pretty out of hand when you use your secondary. If they hit you with like a light hit and you dash near a wall, you will instantly die. So <laughs> normally you only want one of these, so if you can pick this one up, it's definitely you pick that one up and then you don't take any of your dash trainings. For the next training, we got Big Fish. So Big Fish is a fairly strong training for Zentaro for a couple of reasons. First, it gives the lowest HP character more HP, more base HP by 375 HP. That's a lot considering how your character has like 1k HP or something like that. Really, it's, it's pretty bad. So it's really good to increase your HP by a lot when you're going against other brawlers. This is like, if you're playing against enemy brawlers and you see this training up and it hasn't been taken, you take this training. What it also does for you, it increases your uh, range on your abilities, your primary, your secondary, and your R, because they all count as melee hits, so they all become bigger. The ult becomes noticeably bigger, the primary is also becomes a lot bigger. Your secondary is like not that much, but it's still pretty good. It's harder for the enemies to dodge your abilities and you're getting more HP. Aerials. So what it does, it is it increases your range on your dash, and it also increases your projectile range. So your range on your dash gets increased by 75%, and the projectiles get increased by 35 Now you may think the second part doesn't do literally anything for Zentaro, but his passive actually counts as a projectile. So it increases your passive, like when you slice out the, the wave that comes out, it goes farther. Since there's only a few other dash trainings, it basically gets a lot of value if you can't get your hands on Super Surge, like if someone took it, or like you're not doing too well and you think, well, they're gonna take Super Surge from me. You can always just take aerials and it's a pretty good replacement for that. And for our fourth training, we have Built Different here. Now Built Different increases your size by 50%, just like Big Fish. Unlike Big Fish, it doesn't give you more HP, but it gives you more damage on your shock abilities. And so if you're not going into any brawlers and you're not getting KO'd as much, Built Different is really good. Even if you are playing against other brawlers, you're getting increased size for your other, like all your abilities, similar to Big Fish, but you're getting a 15% damage increase on your shock abilities. And every single ability in Zentaro's kit counts as shock. So it's pretty crazy. Next we have Bulk Up. Bulk up is pretty unique in a way. It scales off your stats of your character. Zentaro is not a striker with a lot of base stats. 
He's he more performs off of like uh, awakenings that increase the power of your abilities and all of those things. He doesn't scale too hard on the base stats, so it's gonna be a lot lower than what would be normal for other characters. This is also not a good awakening to take from other characters for the most of the time, so it's gonna be kind of like if you don't have that much of a choice, you know, bulk up, not terrible. It increases your HP and your damage based on your HP, but since Zentaro is the lowest HP striker in the game, he does not scale off this very well. So unless you're getting like big fish or other awakenings that are giving you HP, you're not going to get too much value off this training. Next we got Cast the last. So Zentaro doesn't have any buffs or debuffs in this kit, so it's not the best. It's kind of, you know, useless. So we're going to put it in the useless tier. So this is Chrono Boost. The third dash increase training, like Aerials, it increases your dash, but doesn't increase the damage of your dash. You get your buffs and debuffs to last a lot longer when you cast them, but Centauro, he doesn't have any buffs and debuffs, so if you really have, like, I guess nothing else to take, you know, go with the Chrono Boost, I guess, if you really need the dash increase range. Sometimes I go games where I just don't pick up a dash increase, because I see Chrono Boost, and I'm like, oh, there's some better options I can take for my striker. So it's gonna be in that B tier. Heavy Impact is a very strong one as well. What basically what it does is whenever you hit like two or more things, you get cooldown reduction on the ability you, you hit two or more things on. And it also increases your shock by 15%, so 15% damage boost on the striker. It's very good. It helps you maintain your cooldowns and it helps you deal out more damage. This ability is pretty good. So we're going to put it in the S tier here. I'd highly recommend taking that one if you don't have any uh, abilities that give you cooldown reduction yet. It'll give you that more damage, but again, I still think big big flopper. I love calling it a big flopper and built the first better. Next we have Deadeye. It's useless. You can proc it if you have tons of projectile increased range, but I mean, that doesn't matter too much. It's not going to be that useful for you. I, I just never take Deadeye unless you're really trying to deny it from someone like Rasmus on Aimee's app. When he Yoop throws his lasso out, you know, it's going to do a little bit. It's going to do a little bit of damage. I mean, if you're really Copium, nothing else can take. If you can take a creation training or cast the last or Deadeye, take Deadeye. Make sure you're denying enemy strikers what they want to be taking. Same goes for extra special. Well, this... <clears throat> okay. So extra special is a very good training for Zentaro. His ultimate is basically the longest ult CD in the game at 40 seconds. A train that literally decreases the cooldown of your ult by like a decent amount is a good on this champion. If you don't have any cooldown reduction, this is a really good awakening to take. But if you do, even then it's still really good. You know what? I'm bumping it up the S tier actually. It's pretty good. <laughs> It's actually that good. Because it also resets your ultimate in between rounds, so whenever you're trying to use your ult for scoring, you know, go for it, man. If you get that goal, well, there you go. Round reset, your ult's back up again. We have Glass Cannon next. Now, this is a ability where I feel like people are definitely underrating it. What it does is whenever you're not getting hit, you get increased move speed and power, and basically, when you pick up this awakening, you pretty much add another mini game inside the game where the opponents need to keep track of you and damage you and if they're not well you're gonna get tons of bonuses even if they are you're gonna get like a little bit still it, it makes them forced to focus on something else as well and if they focus on you I mean your teammate can probably use something copium you know and even if they don't once you get once you got to start ramped up like it's hard for them to catch up to you it's hard for them to take this thing off of you so it just gives you a decent amount of stats, and so it'll be put in B tier. Don't underestimate Glass Cannon. All right, Missile Prop, we know that this one's going. The range increase training, you know, useless on us, boys. We don't want that. Monumentalist, useless again. For 1-2 Punch, it's pretty useful on Zentaro because you can proc it a lot. Whenever you use an attack and then use an air attack in like a short amount of time, it increases that damage, but right now, um, the damage that it gets increased is not too, too much. So until it's uh, buffed more, I'd say it's at the very top of B tier. It's pretty good. It's a very viable pick to take because you can use a lot of abilities and proc it a lot in Zentaro. 
and get a lot of decent amount of extra damage. Also, with 1-2 Punch, it's very good to deny this from strikers that really like it. Like Juliet, when she uses, basically this is one of Juliet's best trainings where she can just dash and then punch and do a lot of damage. So if you have like an enemy Juliet on the enemy team, you can consider picking up 1-2 Punch and just deny it from her. It's pretty strong at that. Next, we got Prime Time. Now Prime Time is a extremely strong training for pretty much the whole entire cast. And because of that, because it's such an extremely strong training for almost every striker, you want to deny this training from other strikers. So it's going to get a higher priority on the list. If there's like enemy tr uh, strikers that are really good at using prime time, you know you have to take this training. And it's pretty good at Zentaro. It basically increases your damage on your primary and gives you two charges of it. And you can combo with that with like a primary and then a secondary and then another primary for a kill or just primary passive primary. You can do some pretty cool stuff with it. It's a pretty good awakening all around. Peak performance, that's what it's called. It does not feel good to use. Basically what it does, increases your stagger by 250 and it makes it so when you scale your stagger with speed. Now the thing is with speed on Zentaro is his movement speed doesn't necessarily matter as much as all the other strikers because he gets around with his dashes, not through walking as much as the other characters, because he has two blinks, okay? He can blink around the map. His base boost speed doesn't matter as much, because he doesn't need that. So it's it's kind of sitting here at C tier for now, until it gets buffed more. And next we have Perfect Form. Now Perfect Form is freaking OP, okay? Basically what it does is whenever you hit anything, it gives you cooldown reduction. It's different for light hits and heavy hits, but Zentaro has 5 billion hits. So you're gonna get a lot of cooldown reduction. You're gonna, once you get this, you're gonna feel like you're playing a little bit of Earth. You're gonna be using your abilities, going crazy. You're gonna have way more uptime, much more pressure. You can score easier, you can KO easier. Pretty much, you can play the game, but just much more, whatever you have to for. Okay, so Prize Fighter is, I like it. I like it a lot, okay? There's a few reasons why I like Prize Fighter. If you are KOing enemy champions in this game, it's very good. It gives you 25 power. Now, let me put this in perspective for you. When you play the game, your character has 100 power, okay? So you're, it just straight up gives you 25 power. So that's a 4% increase in power right there, just alone, just off the base of it. But whenever you get a takedown, you get another 25 power and it stacks all the way up you can get three stacks and you can have 75 power so you almost are doubling your power when you have it stacked at three but whenever you get ko'd you lose uh, a stack so you can't go below what your original power was you can't go below 100 but it's pretty good it gives you a lot of power it gives you a lot of base stats and if you think you can ko players this awakening is really good so I'd recommend taking that one as well. Next we got Quick Strikes. It's like, since Centauro is really good with a lot of Awakenings, Awakenings that like, just increase your base stuff, like again, the stats, like st your strike, or it's not as good as them, but this is a big butt, guys. If you see an enemy X, I swear to God, if you don't take this, you're losing, bro. You're losing unless he's the worst player in the world, because what it does, is it basically decreases your strike cooldown. Well, guess what happens when X pops his ultimate? He, he uses his strikes to beat the shit out of you, okay? Guys, please, please take this training if an enemy X is about to take it, okay? You can't let this guy have it. It's just not fair. If this is unlimited, you say, oh, okay, X is this the best RNG god ever. And then you just say, well, I guess I have to run away from it. But like, this training is so good at a knife from X, so if you don't deny this from X, I don't know. You're, you're, <laughs> you're kinda trolling, okay? If there's anything, just deny quick strikes from X, okay? Okay, I, I think we, I think I've uh, mentioned this enough. So basically, yeah. It also increases your energy whenever you strike, so. You can get your core flip up more, you can get your dodges to dodge things. It's a pretty decent training all around, but then again, if, it's for, if you're denying it from X, it goes here, okay? If you're not denying it from X, it goes here. Moving on, we have Rapid Fire. Now, Rapid Fire, for me, doesn't feel very good on Zentaro for a little bit of reasons. Basically, all it does is it decreases your primary cooldown. But with Zentaro, his primary is his lowest cooldown. So you're not getting too much value of like, 
how much seconds you're shaving off of it or time you're saving off from your primary. And your primary is not your like the biggest damage on Zentaro. Your biggest damage is like your secondary and your ult. Your primary is just to, like keep them staggered, keep the core control, and just to keep that pressure on them, right? So I'd say Rapid Fire is one of Zentaro's not best trainings, probably one of its worst trainings. So I'd stick away from it. Same goes for basically the Sparks. The reason why I say the Sparks are not that good on Zentaro is because all these other trainings, they, they give him something a lot. His, his stats don't, he, even if you boost his stats, his numbers on it are not insane. Like, again, movement speed doesn't matter as much because you have two dashes. Spark of Resilience, pretty good if you're going against Brawlers, you need the HP. Spark of Focus is pretty okay. But like Strength and Speed, they don't really do too much for you. And like, all the other Awakenings can give you a lot more. So normally you want to stick away from these when you're playing on Centauro. But if you're trying to go for a funny meme build, you know, it's not terrible. If you can get the Exodia of Sparks, you know, you got a pretty mid build, I'll be quite real with you. But like, you can play it, I guess. If you really want to, okay? Just do what you have fun. If you have fun taking the Sparks, yeah, take the Sparks. But if you're trying to get, like, the best trainings, I'd say, you know, no Sparks of Zentaro, okay? No Sparks of Zentaro. Next, we have Specialized Training. Basically, <laughs> increases your ult damage. And since Zentaro's ult has, like, a lot of hits and it has a heavy hit at the end, there's a decent amount of Zentaro's ult damage. We're going to put it in S tier. And... It's really good to deny this from other characters like Juliet and X as well. You really don't want their ult doing as much damage. So it's a good pickup for that situation as well. But yeah, okay, so next we have stacks on stacks. It's another movement speed training, so it's like not that good on Zentaro, but it's still a good training overall. So I'd put it in B tier because Zentaro is pretty fast at stacking it up. So if you think you really need the extra movement speed or there's not that many better options, you know, take it. It's, it's not that bad. It gives you movement speed. It helps you play the map more. You can play the map. You can look for these opportunities easier. It'll help you position better. It's pretty good. So, this is so underrated. I, I, am, I, I am a preacher. I am a preacher for Stagger Swagger. This thing is so broken. Unless it gets changed, it's OP, man. If, you, if you're playing against any brawlers on the enemy team, they're, like, hitting you at all. Like hurting you, this thing gives insane amount of movement speed. Insane. You go so fast whenever you take damage. Okay? It doesn't matter what champion you're taking on. It doesn't matter what striker you're taking on. It's really good. You can get a lot of movement speed. You can get regeneration. It becomes basically whenever you take Stagger Swagger, you become insanely harder to kill. This awakening is the most underrated awakening in the game. Not for Zentaro, but for the whole cast. And next we have Stinger. So basically, whenever you damage an uh, enemy with an ability it procs a burn and you can do dot damage and since Centauro has a lot of abilities it does a lot of damage you can keep the burn up you can keep the damage up you can play to shatter them and just destroy them so we're gonna put it in eight tier it's a pretty decent training I should look to pick up if you want to set up some kills or even just kill players just by yourself just doing tons of damage next we have tempo swing I don't think it's that good on Centauro because the light hits they don't heal that much. They're going off your max HP. And um, Zentaro's max HP, we talked about this before. It ain't so hot. It ain't so hot, okay? You're not going to do that much damage with this training. You proc it a lot. You can do some pretty good damage. So it's a pretty decent pickup. You know, if there's not as many better options available, you know, you could take this and it'll be a okay. You're not like getting a shit training. You'll be fine if you take Tempo Swing. It's not terrible, but it's not the best. Now we have Timeless Creator. It's sure up useless. Please don't take Timeless Creator. Unless you're like really trying to deny it from somebody. But <laughs> if there's two, if there's, if there's Monu and Timeless in the draft and you're trying to deny one, take Monu. It's better, by the way. Monu is better to deny. Next, we have Twin Drive. Now, Twin Drive is absolutely insane on Gentaro because his dash is basically one of his highest damaging abilities and it's a blink. It's a blink, okay? Blinks are just good, especially when you have any movement increase trainings like Super Surge. Super Surge, Twin Drive, it's Jover. You're winning that game, surely. Surely you're winning if you have Super Surge, Twin Drive. It just gives you your cooldowns back quicker. It gives you a 20% reduced cooldown on your secondary. And that'll help you deal out more damage, score more, and you'll have two charges, which is always a good thing. As you can tell, OP two charges are from prime time here. 
as well. Next, we have Hotshot. Now, Hotshot is, to say, pretty mid. Why did I say this? Well, you may think, well, Zentaro can hit the core a lot with his abilities, right? So he can get a lot of cooldown reduction. Well, the thing is, it only procs once per uh, ability, so you can't just, like, hit your ultimate on the core and get your cooldowns back. And it only lowers the cooldown of that ability. It does increase the core speed, but it's it's not that it's not that good to take. It's a pretty good denial if you're playing against Juno, because Juno really likes this awakening. But besides that, you know, hot shot, it ain't too hot, so you, you don't need to take it. And then there's Unstoppable. Now this awakening is <clears throat> OP, OP, but it's not as OP on a character with less stagger than others. But basically what it does, it gives you 90% knockback resist and 10% damage resisted. It makes it so you can just like bash your face in the wall and pretty much never get punished unless you're shattered right next to the blast zone. If you're playing on Aimee's app, guys, if, if you're playing on Aimee's app, please take this. Look, you can't die to the black hole in the middle if you don't move. If you don't move when you get knocked back. So if you're playing on Aimee's app or any maps like that, you know, it's a very good training. I would definitely advise taking it. That's all for this uh, awakening tier list. So, you know, if you enjoy this video, leave a like on it. You know, consider subscribing. Help your homie out, you know. Without further ado, later.